We're going to have a real-time look at telemedicine. I'd like to start with the current landscape and the ever-changing yet ongoing role of telemedicine. So starting with Dr. Palmer, um, how does telemedicine work and how does an MPH, MPN patient ask for or access telemedicine? How do you do that at your center? Uh, so telemedicine has been a real, uh, one of the blessings that's come out of this whole COVID pandemic um, because it, it sort of put fast forward on the development of it and, and certainly has, has opened a lot of doors. I think one of the very the beneficial things of telemedicine is in, in, a, in a disease like MPNs, these are very rare diseases and there are not a lot of specialists um, in the country. So depending on where you live, there may or may not be somebody who specializes in these this disease focus. So by having telemedicine, um, you can have access to a provider who has a higher uh, level of specialty in that specific disease. Um, I think this is really important for any rare disease, uh, just, just because of the difficulty in, in finding specialists. Uh, many of them are in urban areas. And so if you live in a rural area or outside, of, you know, somewhere, um, outside of, of that specific zone, it can be very difficult to come and see a specialist. Additionally, it can be very costly. If you look at the cost of the airfare and the lodging and everything else, I mean, I think of people coming to Scottsdale can pay an enormous amount of money just to come for two nights and, and to, to be able to see me. So the fact that we can do this via telemedicine, they can get the information, receive the education about the disease and have help for maybe their local provider in managing it um, can make a huge difference in the quality of care. Great. Well, thank you. So from a practical perspective, then if you have a newly diagnosed MPN patient and they wanted to get specialized care or talk to an expert, would they just call, would they just look up online and, and find a phone number and try to call your clinic or how would they access maybe as a, an expert opinion from you via telemedicine? So, so um, you know, as of right now, the way, best way to access it is, you know, if you go onto the Mayo Clinic website, there's actually a referral phone number where people can self-refer for um, a consultation. Now, the changing part of this, um, the changing part of this landscape is that right now we're still in the public health emergency. So a lot of the, the barriers between seeing patients in different states based on you know, because I have a license in Arizona, I don't have a license in, in another state. Um, that's going to become a bit more challenging because um, of the fact that if the physician, like for example, myself, if there's a patient who wants an opinion who lives in Nebraska, I don't have a Nebraska license. So therefore it would be a lot more challenging because I can't actually do an initial consultation via telemedicine once the public health emergency ends. I think this is a really important thing that needs to be worked on, probably on more of a legislative level of trying to change some of the rules and laws associated with this um, and something that I know there's a number of people working on. But as of right now, and I think I, I don't remember when the public health emergency um, it will be ending, but during the public health emergency, it's just been a matter of just finding calling in like you'd normally try to get a consult. Okay. Um, however, that that will change, and hopefully, hopefully, as there more awareness of of telemedicine, um, and some of its benefits uh, are really understood, that some of these laws can change, and some of these processes can change, so that they can allow people to get access to care they otherwise wouldn't be able to receive. Yes, I appreciate that, and I will be a fierce advocate out there trying to have those telemedicine benefits continue because I do come from a more rural state, so I appreciate those. To help answer um, some of the points that uh, Jean had had brought up, the um, the American Telemedicine Association works very hard in terms of looking at the, the same problem about state laws being able to, to uh, be licensed and have ways to overcome state barriers. And then another one about the public health emergency, and it is true. Um, I've been hearing that it's going to end sometime in a couple months. So that's that's one thing to keep in mind as well. And um, uh, they're going to have to look in terms of um, what to do afterwards, because there's a lot of things that patients enjoy, providers enjoy, that they'll have to continue, that technically go away, but we don't necessarily want to see that go. And so these are the things that we'll have to keep in mind moving forward after the, the public health emergency ends. Thank you.